Film Reach presents Verbal Masturbation with Bryce and Jim. All right, this week's guest, Mallory Everton, Whitney Call, and Stephen Meek, the collective force behind the film recovery. Well, thank you, fine sir. And uh, we could not be more blessed to have these three fabulous people with us. And we're going to start off with a game just to put everybody at rest. It's kind of like fuck, marry, kill, okay. but, not, but nothing like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, this is called or. Mm, okay. And you don't have to have a reason why. You don't, you don't have to make any explanations, but you can if you want to. I'm going to give you something or something else. And you guys have to decide the one or the other. Okay. That's the name okay. or. It's so okay. complicated, Jim. It is. <laughs> and it requires a lot of explanation because it really doesn't. You didn't even have to say anything. People you could have just went into it. You would have stumped. figured it out. <laughs> they will be stumped. Okay. Number one, Dolly Parton or Gloria Estefan? Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. Yeah. That's Price? A Dolly Parton. <laughs> I would also say Dolly Parton. She wins hands down. Andy yeah. Garcia or Al Pacino? Al Pacino. Oh, I would, I I would Garcia. say Andy, yeah. <laughs> Price? I take a flamethrower to this place. <laughs> of course it's Al Pacino. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick early Al Pacino. Oh, that's okay. what I was thinking of. <laughs> yeah. Uh Rocky or Bullwinkle? Bullwinkle. Bull Bullwinkle, yeah. That's that's the that's the moose, yeah. Rocky yep. is contrary, okay. I guess. <laughs> I think at least squirrels are smart. I don't know. Bryce, what are you? Are you a Rocky fan? I've been during the pandemic, I've probably watched about half of those episodes, and there's about a thousand of them. <laughs> and uh Rocky's kind of a dick. Totally bullwinkle. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'll go with I'll go with dicks because you know I can be that sometimes. I am gonna I'm gonna pick Rocky just for fun. Mm-hmm. Gotta have the gotta have the arch nemesis, right? Just for thing. <laughs> They're a team. What are you talking about? It's not an arch nemesis. <laughs> arch nemesis of evil. What is wrong? <laughs> of Rocky and Bullwinkle aren't there like the two Russian? No, they had Natasha. <laughs> That's Natasha. Boris and Natasha. That's yeah, the arch Boris- ne- nemesis. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yep. Yeah. You're on the right track. I'll yep. pick I'll pick Natasha. Great. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't an option, but I love it. I love where it going. Um, okay, so Jim Carrey or Ryan Reynolds? Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. I I mean i from just friends forward. I've just loved him. It's oh. nothing against Jim because I love him. Oh no, just friends <laughs> forward. If you said the movie after Just Friends, I could understand. I love, it. I love Just Friends for Christmas. It's a great Christmas film. <laughs> the year. I'm going Jim Carrey. Mm. You know what? Yeah. I think I'm going Jim Carrey too for his his dramatic roles. Yeah. Eternal Truman Sunshine. Show. Truman Show. Watch yeah. There we go. Very See that. Yep. This that's literally the toughest question probably so far because these are going to be so easy. We got Arnie or Sly. Oh, Sly. Sly. I'll say Arnie then to be contrary and again. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm all about Sly. Yeah. I'm all about Arnie always, and I'm always be back. Uh, two of my favorites. I, this is going to be impossible for me to decide, but maybe it'll be easier for you. Lily Tomlin or Carol Burnett. Carol Burnett. But Lily Tomlin, gosh. Yes. I, I pick Lily. I love her. I love her. <laughs> it, nice. it is an unfair question. It is unfair. That's, that's not fair. I grew up with Carol Burnett, so I can't I can't turn on my home girl like she's, that. She's literally written a screenplay about kidnapping Carol Burnett. And oh. <laughs> it's, it's like misery, but cute and fun. Yeah. yeah. It Aww. might be the next film that gets made. Who knows? Who, but, who knows? But like, yeah. Carol I sure hope so. <laughs> I'm on board. Well, Carol Burnett. <laughs> Carol Burnett, yeah. Because you know what? I like pulling my ears and other things. Uh, mm. Okay. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia or Curb Your, curb your Enthusiasm. Always Sunny. 
Oh, okay. I have to go with Always Sunny. Yeah, I haven't watched sunny. enough of Curb to, to even know. I'm going, yeah, I'm going Sunny as well. Oh. Okay, Paris <laughs> or Berlin? Oh, I wish I was cool enough to say Berlin, but I'm going to say Paris. I know. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like... Your romantic side heart. I've never been. I just I've, love the food. It's uh, just so much butter. It's so good. <laughs> yes. You can almost get it as a side dish, I think. Yeah. Bryce? Nah. He <laughs> could take or leave either. No, no, whatever. <laughs> well, give him Berlin then. <laughs> yeah. He's the cool one. <laughs> okay. Soy milk or real milk? Real milk. Always. <laughs> I mean, taste-wise and health-wise, I, I would say real milk. I can't have milk anymore, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add an extra or and do pea milk, because that's oh, my pea milk. Nice. <laughs> yes. I don't think I've ever had pea milk. I, I would say real milk, too, if those are Rice. My yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no baby cow formula for me. Uh, I'll go with the soy milk. Mm -hmm. uh, Bryce, Bryce is our resident vegan, so... Oh. Oh. Yeah. And he's lost like 300 pounds, something like I that. I have so. not. It's 350, <laughs> isn't it? He lost 100, like 160. Oh, yeah. He, he weighs like five pounds now. He used to weigh like <laughs> 500. I was that. Okay. The, the, I was last, like the last question Handy or Handsy? Handy. <laughs> You have no use for Hansy. Like, <laughs> I think it's interesting. <laughs> it's for, I guess. Is it for other people or for me? <laughs> it can do it every. It just you can, it. That's right. Use just your more. imagination. Or gall, this is complicated. You should have explained more rules. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly. what we needed. Well, I always choose Hansy because that's I'm, I. People always mistake me for Italian if I didn't have this Canadian Spider accent. <laughs> Andy. Okay. So thank you. I'm hope that you know got everybody loosened up and brushed off the cobwebs from not being outside. <laughs> so uh, we hear through the grapevine that this film, this fabulous film, I should say, that you produced was at South by Southwest as its first drop. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. So obviously, I don't think you could go there, right? No, no, no it was all online. It was digital. Mm -hmm. We had so, some fun Zoom calls with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And that was basically it. <laughs> that was it. So it was like a five minute, hey, we're talking, talking, but it, it must have created a lot of buzz for you, didn't it? Well, you know what's so interesting? Uh, about it in general, I feel that like we've never we've never taken a film to a festival festival before. Recovery was the first feature we'd ever made, and it was you know it took place during the pandemic, and then we got into a festival while the pandemic was still happening, <laughs> and then to watch it, we watched all of these films along with our film like oh. in our beds, like we watched everything else all year. So. Oh. Oh. We made, we made a, we definitely did make some nice connections and we networked a bit, but it, I'd be lying if I said that it wasn't just kind of surreal and I still wonder if it did anything. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like some people saw it. Well, it's getting good buzz, right? I think so. There's like a little ticker underneath it. And like, you know, when we were watching it, we could tell some people had viewed it, but yeah, we, we had a lot of nice a lot of nice feedback and then some nice dms and stuff that came in around the time and it was so much more than we could have imagined when we just made this film to stay sane so it was a really really fun experience but probably atypical to the normal festival experience oh yeah for sure well then it went from there all the way to canada mm -hmm. is that the next stop on the trip yeah yeah, yeah. So international you, premiere and yeah. And in a drive-in, no less. Right? I know. I wish I could have been there. It's yeah. It was literally the best experience. I'm sorry that you couldn't make it. Because <laughs> it, was, it was like we, we've well, obviously been in pandemic for two years. And Bryce and I are, um, I don't even know how you, how you want to describe it. But 
we're both very into festivals and mm-hmm. Cuff is our favorite festival because we, we live in Calgary, so we don't have to escape it. The and Calgary the, Underground Film Festival. Yeah. So we've been like this pandemic thing has really messed up film festivals for us too because everything is streaming. And for us to be able to see films and drive in was such a, such a treat. And your film just killed it. The whole crowd loved it, like loved it. Like they, they were honking for like probably 10 minutes after the, the film, right? Oh, it was just, yeah. yeah. So we, there's going to be still, hopefully some- yeah, we've still only seen it on little computer screens and stuff. We just we haven't seen it with the crowd. It's no. so nice to hear. You should just keep telling us about <laughs> play we'll, by play. We'll we'll keep telling. We, I, I'll tell anybody who'll listen. And I've my, said this, my girlfriend uh, was literally howling at some. Oh, so. <laughs> yep. Oh, well, I, I said this on our podcast when we reviewed the the film, but this was literally the best comedy I've seen in five years. So five years. Yes. Oh, wait, have you not watched all. any comedies? <laughs> I have seen some. Bryce makes me watch them. And um, <laughs> and I've never laughed as hard as I did at that one. So kudos oh, to you both. You. Kudos to you both. Oh, uh, both. All three. What am I talking about? Oh, yeah, it's like two writers and then two directors. You guys <laughs> should have all did everything all at once. Oh, and that would have been. It was for anything. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So, so is it going anywhere from us? Like, is it, have you had any other screenings or? We are this coming weekend. We're playing at Desert Scape. Next weekend. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, the 26th. Yeah. So yeah. that will be the first experience we have live. Oh, yeah. Crowd, so we're very excited about that. So you'll, nice. get to, you'll get to go to the theater and see it. This yeah. is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're excited and nervous, you know. When you've made something to hear people react and not react, it's it's anxiety inducing, but it's also very thrilling. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, wow. It just, Re- rest yeah. assured, you're okay. Because at the drive-in, I mean, we're all in our own little cars, and I could I could hear the laughter from around the, the whole place. So <laughs> you're you're good. Yeah, you don't. You guys don't need to. This when it gets released full throttle, that you guys are just gonna kill it. And we oh. could say we got to see it second. Nice. Second, oh. truly, wouldn't have it any. I wish we could have given it to you first. I hear you were actually picked up for uh, U.S. distribution. Is that is that a thing? Yeah, it is. Yeah, we. Uh, yeah, just announced today. We uh, we got acquired by Decal. Nice. And so. They will be um, hopefully putting it out in select theaters this fall and then uh, going to some SVOD platform, hopefully, after that. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. But we, we love them. They have been such a cool team to work with. Them and BuzzFeed Studios is our um, executive producing team now. And then um, Soro Films, all, all three of them have just been working pretty tirelessly to um, make it reach people. and. Yeah. So I, I and XYZ and XYZ our sales team, but yeah, everyone's been been kind of putting it into full gear to get it ready for this fall. Yeah. Nice. So okay, okay. Here's a question: Can any of you speak another language? Are you gonna get to do your own voiceovers, oh. Stephen? So you yeah. can. Steven I can could. speak. I can speak Korean, but like not well enough, I think, to do. <laughs> The yes, lines that you had from the movie. You only have that. Well, you got to take a few takes. <laughs> yeah, so a few takes. Yeah, I'll ha- I'll have to get a professional translator, and then I can do it. But yes. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> so, so, go. Oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go. Say what's soap wine in Korean? Do you know that? <laughs> I couldn't even. I couldn't even. <laughs> soap. I remember. <laughs> I, I, I kind of want. I kind of want to try soap wine now. I really do. Is that actually a thing? No. I don't think anything, anything's a thing. I don't remember what we put in that bottle. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was some Martinelli's. <laughs> oh my God, that's good. <laughs> All right. So uh, on to, you know, the questions that have to be asked that everybody else has probably already asked you, but uh, first feature film, how did this come about and why make your first attempt during a pandemic? (laughs) Oh, I'm sure you've got a stock answer for this. (laughs) We'll try to make it as as freshly told. 
as we can because all we, right this is a fresh take um i i mean we mallory and i we grew up together so we've known each other you can see in the end credits we've been making stuff since we were uh in like what 98 was when we first started making stuff together yeah and so we um kind of have been making things all growing up steven joined our comedy troupe in 2011 so um we'd kind of been wanting to make a feature for a while and um mal and i were writing scripts and sending them back and forth for for features and for um different kinds of television shows that we were hoping could get off the ground someday um we had plans going on and then the pandemic hit and we kind of i think went through the same stuff that everyone else went through where it was like my life is over and the world is just not going to ever come back again and why try at anything we both got into some things i got into pottery Mal got into, for like a into, week well for like <laughs> two i threw like 60 things 60. nice <laughs> Mal got into puzzles in a big way we oh, just yeah. we were coping really lost my mind like i was <laughs> tracking my bowel movements at one point nice <laughs> Going a little aviator mad for sure. Oh, nice. Is that is that online anywhere? I'm, sometimes I you know, don't got things to do at two in the morning. Yeah. To I'm some sure. degree, who doesn't track your bowel movements? I mean, really. Right. I mean, you know what's happening. I think most people have a poop window. It's <laughs> <laughs> unless you're going out and eating like crazy Mexican, followed by crazy Thai the next day. Then it's like. All hell breaks loose. You don't know. <laughs> you gotta keep on top of that stuff. Yeah, it's true. Well, uh, yeah. So we were we were just kind of I, I was definitely going crazy. I was here in LA in my apartment and I just I felt it was especially uh claustrophobic. And so I I went to go and live with my sister and her family for a little while in Utah nice. where I live. And so I could be around some more people and have a little bit more community built into the unit you know yeah and Whit and I just got talking about is there anything we can do to make this period of time not just feel like once it's over we just wish we could erase it like just nothing we didn't do any like I that's a feeling I've had the whole time right like it just feels like it's gonna be like a year that we forget about because we didn't mm learn anything or meet anyone you know it, was, it, it you know it's such an oppressive feeling i think we've all been dealing it with with it in our own ways and so many people have accomplished so much regardless but for us it was like how can we just learn uh we've yeah. never ever finished it we've never finished a movie before we've never made a feature before is, is there something that we could do safely yeah. now you know because now or never as far as making a passion project like that we've always you know, we've written, uh, we've written a lot of comedy. We've written, we've done a lot of ads and web series and stuff always for a client. And like always yeah. someone, someone was asking us to do something. This is the first time we ever just wrote something because we wanted to write it. So. And funding had always gotten in the way at, yeah. at some point. I mean, that's like every first features problem, right? It's like, okay, now Who's gonna fund this? I promise I'm I'm gonna do a good I'm job. Good for it. Yeah. You just gotta see what I can do. Yeah. And so we were like, well, I mean, no one's gonna pay for us right now. The economy's crap. Like, let's just do it ourselves. Mm. So we literally just like pulled our money together and got a couple friends who were really nice. And Steven's wow. parents. My parents donated a bit of money. Yeah, just to wow. be like, hey, could we do like anything with this much resources? Wow. Um, and we like got our producer friend Babetta Kelly involved and she looked over like our budget and everything. She was like, I think we could do this. We were like, okay. <laughs> like that was like our goal. We were like, we're gonna, we're gonna try this. Well, and Mal too, you had, uh, you had been looking online while we were writing the script. Yeah. Well, what basically, when was it? It was end of June. End of June. We yeah. We came up with this rescue idea we initially were just going to do some kind of sister road trip thing initially it was like we had a body in the back seat or something it was like <laughs> a, a diff, like a crime thing mm -hmm. but we once once the rescue thing happened it just kind of clicked and th an outline kind of came out really naturally and so we took that as a sign that we should keep working on it that at the very least it was like fueling us creatively so yeah. we should keep going and I think we got about three days into writing the actual script 
we were just meeting over Zoom for a couple hours a day to hash out our outline we'd already made. And I told Wit I'd looked up the Sundance deadlines and I was like, it's the beginning of July. And if we got this movie done, done by October, we could <laughs> submit it to Sundance is the first of a long line of festivals that have submissions then. And we went back and forth about it, sort of like, are festivals even gonna happen? Like, are they gonna cancel it? Is yep. it even gonna be worth it for us to hustle to try and hit that? But I don't know, we just, I don't even really remember the well, moment. We just kind of said, yeah, let's And go. we knew no one, <laughs> No one was probably going to care about a COVID movie in a 2022 film festival. Right. So like if we're, if we're going to make this, then like we might as well ride the wave. Yep. Yep. Maybe it'll be oversaturated, but like it'll be so early on that maybe people yeah. won't know it yet. Maybe we'll be right. Yeah. Well, and it is kind of the perfect timing. Like this movie is now perfect because people <sighs> are so done with it right? Like it, it really is so right. perfect because now you can laugh at it. And I think that's what makes it even more funny is because like if this movie came out at the beginning of the pandemic, mm -hmm. some of the bits would not have hit. I think. <laughs> right. But yeah. because of where it's now at, like every, every bit hit because it's kind of like, oh yeah, I know someone like that. Or I know mm -hmm. someone like your, your, like your sister and you people know that, like the whole thing about going on a cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> just beyond epic right so so okay but but okay obviously maybe you don't want to talk about how much the budget was but i mean i think it's helpful that it was mostly you two right like it was it, it that was helped. At first. yeah when yeah. when we were in pre-production so we it took us two weeks to write it and then uh two weeks of pre-production and editing the script and then two weeks of filming and then mal and Steven worked together to get a, a first cut in two weeks. So it was like, I mean, it's a, it's a timeline I would never recommend. Like I would, <laughs> I would never do it again, but it was um, helpful for us because as we just got it going, we said, okay, we have this budget for this amount of people on this crew. Plus we're going to keep it safe for, for COVID standards anyway. And because we were already in motion, that's when Soro film stepped in. We were about halfway through production and they um, are really interested in helping first time filmmakers, female driven nice. stories, things like that. So they were super interested and we were like, well, it's being made whether or not you give us money. So you can, and it would be awesome, um, but we're, we're going to make it either way. And I think that was kind of what, what drew them in was just that the ball was already rolling. Mm -hmm. So halfway through production, they stepped in and gave us enough money to let us breathe and say, okay, we can pay our crew <laughs> actual rates. We can like have a post-production budget. There were things afterwards that I don't think we would have been able to make this movie what it is mm -hmm. without that. Yeah. It, it's still like not a, you know, it's not a blockbuster budget or anything like that. Yep. It's, it's a very modest indie budget, but yep. we also, we wrote it that way too. Like mm -hmm. we're like, if we can make this well, then like, that's all we care about. It's just like two, two people, most of the time in a car, which we thought was a good idea. At we first. thought that was a simple premise. <laughs> we, we thought really that thought would that clarify was going to be a really, really easy thing to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As we started it, we were a little bit like, huh? Yeah, it's hard. This it's is, hard. but at the same really time, hard. because we were filming in the middle of a pandemic, like the the studio or the rental company that yeah. had the process oh, sure. trailer, they were, I mean, no one else was using it at the time. So we were like, "Hey, can can I mean, Let's we can count. pay you the full <laughs> price, but we can we can pay something." They're like, "Okay," like they were so nice to us. But yeah. I think also like. And like our, our director of photography, um, like a lot of our crew who we had always wanted to work on a project like this with was freed up because they were like, yeah, oh, all, all my, all my gigs are getting canceled right now. We're yeah. like, well, <laughs> we got a tiny one. You can hop on. <laughs> so what was the shooting from when to when? How long was the total shooting? It was July 27th to Till like August 8th yeah. or something, right? August 11th, something like that. And we had like 11 days, 11 day shoot. Shooting. Right? Yeah. Yep. 11 days was... plus a couple pickup days for, um, for B-roll. Yeah, for yeah, like yeah, a yeah. road trip mm -hmm. footage. And, and mm -hmm. it's funny, the very first cut of the film had <laughs> just like filler content for a bit for the all the transitions. And Mallory literally like lifted shots from Tommy Boy 
Okay. I just Here's the card. Right <laughs> <laughs> it's in the movie. So people All of our <laughs> friends that we screened it for, they were like, why did the car change? <laughs> they, they were like, Is that a joke? I don't think it's a joke. Yeah, they just, they were very confused by it, but it was for me, just for rhythm. Like, we need a shot like this, kind of. <laughs> yeah, it was like two weeks after that. We went around Utah and just picked up all that stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Did you, so, like, the chemistry between you two, like you said, you guys grew up together, mm -hmm. but I mean, you guys could have been sisters. Like, you really could have. You could have. You, like you really felt that in the show, especially the first opening scene oh. where it's at the party for the 30th birthday. It was just like, that's exactly how you talk with your bestie or your sister that's your sister. You know what I mean? Um, was it was a lot of that, was it ad-lib some of it or did you guys stick to script? It was ad-libbed at one point. That That's pretty much how we breezed through the writing process so quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, was we basically were very conversational. I uh, was a transcriptionist for a job during college. And so I'm like pretty, like I can, I can take some stuff down pretty quickly. So yeah. our yeah. rhythm able to stay pretty natural. I think because we knew how few filming days we had, we knew that we had to keep it pretty tight. So we thought like, we, we don't have a ton of time to be able to just like improvise things into life. I don't trust myself that much, <laughs> but we, we had, we had enough time, I think in the writing process to, to play with things and make it sound just like our voices, mm -hmm. um, which luckily we're both super familiar with each other's voices as mm -hmm. well as our own. And we thought if we're, if we're going to make a movie as close to our natural voices as possible, we'll be able to, to do it so much uh, quicker and know that the quality isn't suffering, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big thing, right? Especially if you're trying to do a different accent or yeah. you're trying to put out, put out yeah. a different emotion than yourselves. It's so much easier to play yourself, at mm -hmm. least for your first feature, mm -hmm. for your next feature, it'll, you can yeah. be whoever you all want. All cockney all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Steven's going to play the Korean yeah. Uh, yeah. something, whatever that is. Uh, just, just so you know, Bryce's I'm, I'm speaking for Bryce and he'll correct me if I'm wrong because it's a habit we have um but Korean films are our favorite films actually oh yeah, yeah. Like, like, so yeah. if you yeah. if you go to Seoul or Busan and make a film we'll definitely we'll go for the opening over there for you we would okay. we would absolutely do it we really would love that and we yeah. will email you if that happens. oh yeah <laughs> We're going to Korea, Bryce. Excellent. <laughs> Love to bring a film to a Korean film festival. Yeah. yeah. So, but but okay. So, have have you been pushing to get into other festivals, or have you have you applied for a million? Or, um, I mean, we applied to a ton, yeah. and when South by said yes, I mean, we we just we never thought that would happen. And no. so and we literally got like five or six like just no yeah <laughs> rejected. we were really... we were gonna be super excited to be in any festival like literally anything that could teach us about the process so when south by it was like the first yes and it came pretty early on it was like january 5th that we'd gotten our, our notification from them it was i think just sort of like <gasps> It, it kind of, I think, spun us all a little bit out of out of this world a little bit, and uh, and so I think after that, we well, we got a sales team out of that announcement, and we got um, well, and then during the festival, we got BuzzFeed. But everyone that we were working with, basically, in our sales team, was like, "Okay, you got South by like, don't don't do any more festivals. Like now, we we just want to we want to go for distribution." Like Whoa. if we get into some like festivals that are worth it for us, then yeah, like mm -hmm. we'll, we totally love to do it. But as far as like breaking our backs to, to apply to a ton of them, like they're like, don't, don't worry about it. You've gotten the press coverage that you need to hopefully get the people that we need. And that may be largely, I mean, as you know, this is our first experience with this. So we're just learning a lot right now, but it could largely be because there, so many of them are digital that mm -hmm. they're just not seen quite as the, our team at least doesn't seem to think they're quite as valuable as they would normally be as uh, interesting which is it's it's a bummer the, the the number of times that I've been like oh shucks it's so sad we can't be out there just like 
you know, prancing this film around. Losing and prancing. Yeah, but I can't help it. I just it's another concern too, just because like oh yeah, because I mean, the digital festivals. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there are just a few things that like I mean you you wouldn't even necessarily consider when you're just going to in person festivals that this year kind of threw a wrench into some things. So we may have to consider another film down the line as like our true festival experience. <laughs> This one that you can go to every yeah. single little <laughs> tiny one like you get into the Idaho Film yes. Festival yeah. in Idaho. Well, Idaho's not far from, from where you're at. In person, that would be like a dream come true. I, it'd be, a, you know, more... Road trip! <laughs> road trip! <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd have... Tried to road trip up to Calgary. For, for yeah, time. well, if it has... Yeah, well... Uh, it's going to be hopefully released in major up here too, right? So we'll we'll go watch yeah. it again in theaters. We love giving money awesome. away. Yeah. <laughs> we'll push it again. <laughs> Mommy duties. Mommy yes. duties. <laughs> to berate the children. I'm literally watching her on like the monitor camera, and she's like picking up the the children, like putting them in the beds. <laughs> you see, mommy's trying to have a life. Oh, you can see it. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Kiss. Okay. All right. So you finished you finish your first feature film. Looking back, what are you most proud of? Oh, I think finishing our first feature film. <laughs> nice. That's what I was hoping you were going to say. Next question. <laughs> what? What? No. Cool. Uh, Come on, there's got to be something like, okay, because you had to do everything. Like I was reading the credits on this and you're like, oh, okay. You did editing, you did directing, you did writing, you did, you did music. Like there's a music credit in there. Do you guys actually wrote some music too? Or what's? It was your, your brother. My brother wrote some music that's used in it. So that might've been, that might've been in there. And then you, but... maybe lyrics, did you say something in it? I don't know. I think you guys got a music I credit. Mean... Make, I guess we improvised song. some songs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I feel I feel very proud. Uh, I think mostly of I just so um, I I don't is it proud or is it just gratitude? I just feel so grateful that we were on the same page in the same place at the same time. That that the three of us and our really talented friends were all game in the yeah. same moment for something I just I don't see ever repeating in my life ever again just a moment filled with that much yeah you know like it was just so vacuous you know yeah. during yeah, that yeah, time. Yeah. and to have been able to give momentum and purpose to our lives for a little while and just I'm just so grateful that I know these people and that I was able to work with them. And I have a, I have a feeling it's not going to be the last time, which brings uh, me to JK Studios. Hmm. Yeah. So tell us more about this. You started a, a studios. <laughs> yeah, a great way. Of it, and, and what exactly are you doing with this? Um, JK Studios is kind of the name. Don't don't think about the name too much. <laughs> We were we were just fresh off of Studio C. The the ten of us that had started that show it was a sketch comedy show on BYU TV. Um, we the ten of us were just ready to start new projects, so we left on mass. We formed JK Studios together, and and the dream really was just to be like we're gonna make um, we're gonna make um, we're gonna do tours. We're going to um, make features we're going to make web series we're going to do all sorts of different things um and yeah we just we just were ready and rearing to like have control over the entire process the all of the creative process um and have just more of like an unfiltered us out there um and so jk studios was started we we've done quite a number of projects together and we're still doing projects together um, um like we, the we just wrapped a a six week shoot just a few weeks ago. It felt like the longest. 100 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> the 
<laughs> so, so enough time to make three movies? Is that what? <laughs> we shot 220 pages, actually. Um, wow. it's, it's a it's a sitcom that we created over at JK Studios and we were able to crowdfund a second season. Oh, we wow. actually, we crowdfunded that season the day before we found out we got into South by. So it was kind of yeah. a crazy week and we nice. were really busy working on both like trying to do the best we can with recovery and help it and support it however we can. And then also writing and uh, shooting this show, yeah. which we're editing now, but. Yeah. Wow. And so when does that come out? I think it's September, the same kind of time. October, probably. September, October is mm -hmm. somewhere in the fall. Yeah. So so it sounds like it's never ending now. And <laughs> and is it easier for you to live in LA and, and for Winnie and Steven for you to live in in Utah? Like is it easy for you to work together on, on a distance? I mean Yeah. I, mean, I mean, the a lot of the other JK Studios members are are close by here in Utah, um, so yeah, we we're we're able to write and film things together pretty frequently. Um, and Mallory, yeah, she she flies in all the time to hang out with us. Like this is basically her second home, I guess. Yeah, I just stay with my sister in her guest room that her kids call Aunt Mal's room, and Aww, that's awesome. <laughs> I love I love that I have a nice warm. Uh, family to stay with when I go and work there because I feel I basically at this point I'm pretty I'm bi-coastal in the lamest way possible just like between <laughs> LA and Utah <laughs> I love it bi-coastal all the way to Utah yep just now, now is it Salt Lake or because I've been to I've been to Utah a couple times is yeah. it in Salt Lake yeah. Yeah. nice we're, yeah. we're in Provo area so that's um yeah a little bit south of Salt Lake yeah, so nice. Sundance all the time. Yeah, it's a great little city. It's so cute. Is mm -hmm. what I would say. And yeah. I hear I live like people think. Oh, you live in Canada. You have what? Ten people in your city? I guess <laughs> you live in Calgary. <laughs> we live in yeah. Calgary. We have too damn many people on our yeah. city. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can never have too many people. Come oh, on. You can. Oh yes. <laughs> as they're as I'm riding my bicycle to work and they're whizzing by my ear. There's too many of them. <laughs> it's true. Too many that are in cars, I guess. Yeah, I've right. been hit by a car in like two years, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's wearing a helmet finally because and I'm and I've only been hit by one bus, so that's yeah. <laughs> what <laughs> he likes. It to nudged break. me. I flew off. I you skidded flew across. Off? Oh yeah. <laughs> Did your shoes come off? I feel like I oh, no, no such luck. What about I barely got, I got a little road rash, and that was that. Did your pants fall off? Because that happens no. a lot. Yeah, well, whatever. What about like your skeleton? I don't know how to say this properly. Did you oh. break anything? Yeah, I, I bounce. <laughs> I'm I've gotten really good at get uh, falling off my bike. Like, there's no one that can do it better than me. Roll. You're a stunt man. Yeah. Point. Yeah, so if you need stunts in your next film, Bryce will roll or down. Okay. He'll fall off bikes, get hit by buses, you name it. I've got this theory that I can probably jump off anything as long as I dive roll. I think I'll be okay. <laughs> I've never put it into, you know, into effect. I've never tried it, but I'm pretty sure. That's very fascinating. I mean, that is literally what stunt people do. I'm riding a bus hit in my next <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Please I'm make the character's name up. Bryce. I know the perfect guy. <laughs> there you go. So uh, let's uh, talk comedic influences. Who makes you laugh? Oh, goodness. Oh, well, we yeah. already talked about Carol. Yes. Yeah, Carol was a big one for me. That was um, kind of what my mom and I bonded over growing up. So uh, yeah, that's that's a foundational one. Yeah, I feel like I'd, we'd be remiss if we weren't talking about all of the SNL women from our childhoods, like yep. Molly Shannon and Sherry O'Terry and Tina Fey and Amy Poehler, and then eventually Kristen Wiig. Andy Samberg was hugely in, uh, influential to me, as was Adam Sandler. And like everything that came out of SNL, we just like, we saw it all and watched a lot of it together. What? And no Mad TV? We did a little that. bit. Uh oh, oh hot dog. Oh, I mean, uh, Mo Collins. Gosh. No, yeah. It, it Stuart. Was, I remember Stuart. <laughs> yeah. Stuart. Stuart. 
<laughs> yeah, there were some pretty talented ladies in SNL, right? There, there oh, really yeah. were, and they they uh it was not an easy time for women they just paved so 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 much uh road for yeah. tons and tons of women in the industry so super grateful for that and then i also i fell in love with um the cornetto trilogy and edgar oh. Wright, uh, a mm -hmm. simon Pegg and nick frost when as a teenager yeah. and the love is still so strong i'm just still very obsessed Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think contemporary too like gosh there's so many women doing cool things and just mm -hmm. people in general doing cool things I guess but like like Phoebe Waller-Bridge is just yeah. like I I think lighting up everyone right now and just the the kind of um like content that we're able to get from like her and Olivia Wilde and um women who are just stepping up and saying like even like Reese Witherspoon and, and Nicole Kidman um teaming up for Big Little Lies I think a lot of this was really um in influencing our um just like roaring excitement for like oh gosh like people actually want to hear about like what happens to me like <laughs> they just they don't want to just put me in like a man's story and and then it's fun but like so that I think was it's at least definitely for for recovery it was hugely influential. Was we were like, okay, I think we're pretty certain now that even if we just make a movie about a lot of things that these two girls go through, that hopefully it'll it'll um, entice more than just like one type of person. And we've we've had a super positive feedback from a lot of people, which is awesome. I think it's it's telling us that consuming is going in a good direction. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you think about, I don't know too many buddy road movies that have two women leads, right? I mean, Thelma and Louise is the one everybody thinks about, but yeah. they're a little serial killery kind of, right? So right. You, where you are both more fun and funny, <laughs> it's well, a little different. It's so but interesting. Yeah, I can't even think of one. It's one of those things where uh, even when we were writing it and we were talking about, or we were we were shooting it we we're talking about it like are people gonna watch this like Thelma and Louise already exists which is crazy when you think about it it's like wait a second we've already seen one road trip with movie with two women in it so we shouldn't make any others <laughs> even though we don't need another one that was perfect that ship has sailed. that's right nobody <laughs> wants another see. But th that's how so many conversations go, you know, there are log lines that sound identical to all these different films. I think that it's just really important for creators to just go ahead and tell their story their way. Yeah. It will be yeah. very, very different. Even if Whitney, ha Whitney and I had been escaping the law, our movie would have looked nothing like Thelma and Louise because we are nothing like Ridley Scott. We just wouldn't have made the same film. <laughs> it would have been a comedy because that's what you do. You do exactly. comedy and you do it well. Although, you know, they say people who can do comedy well can also do horror well. I, that is, I <laughs> love you said that. <laughs> so badly. Right? I um, yeah. mm -hmm. love I'm doing a horror. I'm doing a horror short this weekend. Actually, I, I'm getting into it. I'm so excited. Send it to I, us. I we'll look at they're, it. They're cousins, you know, horror and comedy. They are, oh. it's all about suspense and surprise uh, in yep. both directions. So, yeah, uh, I hope the to best, make many comedies. The, the best movies. I, this is this is me personally saying this. Again, I'm not speaking for Bryce this time. For a change, I guess maybe you, you um, never do. It's true. It's, I'm never right when I do it. But comedy horrors, I think, are the absolute best genre. I want to kiss you on the mouth. I completely <laughs> agree. <laughs> yeah. Right? I was leaning into Hansy now. Yeah, uh, see? Sorry. I'm sorry. Hansy's, I didn't, uh, Hansy's I didn't not so bad. Way. I meant it in like a sweet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but you do know I do like Hansy. So, you know. okay, I have uh, a couple of really important questions I need to ask Stephen because, you know, he's been so well behaved. <laughs> so the first question, which has been on my mind for a long time was, Stephen, did you have to do the toilet dick pic? That's part A. And part B, does this pic actually exist? I'm just asking for a friend. <laughs> This picture does does not exist. I mean, I'm sure somewhere there are plenty of them that exist. Yeah. But Steven didn't have Ooh, to model had, for it. 
I didn't have to model it. What well, was that one that was going around that handling. blurry dick pic? Was it, was it, what was that one uh, celebrity's dick pic that was? Oh, Chris no. Evans. Chris it was Evans. Chris Evans. <laughs> you can't, you guys, you can't it. find it anywhere. Like, it <laughs> Evans people, they're good. <laughs> they they really are. scrubbed <laughs> the web. Oh my gosh. He's part but of I the thought. Illuminati, I think, maybe. <laughs> or the, maybe it's the penis Adi. I don't know. One of these things. <laughs> But the other one that's most important question is because when you when you Google your names, obviously there's a few things that come up. There's your studio, mm -hmm. there is your life in C, as you mm -hmm. call it, I guess. I and then when you when you search Stephen's name, the first thing comes up is perhaps a great great grandfather, <laughs> yeah, who <laughs> happened to be the most famous trapper and guide. Is yeah. that your is that your great 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 I great haven't... something? I haven't been able to figure out if we're actually related or not. Like, so you know of him? I know of him for sure. Yeah, he. There's that film about it about him, Meek's Cut Off. Right. What? A while back, and um, where he like ended up like leading a, one of the people that he was guiding, one of the groups he was guiding, like ended up all dying because it was oh. a. It's kind of a tragedy. Okay. Anyway, but like, yeah, he's at the top of the list for all of like. Um, Oregon Trail. So yep. if you ever play Oregon Trail, he's the number one up there. And people constantly are sending me messages like, <laughs> are you really good at Oregon Trail? And, uh, I'm not going to explain to you. Yes, I am. Really good at exactly. Just say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Check, search my name on Google, bitch. It'll <laughs> yeah. come up. There it is. <laughs> that's me. So yeah, as soon as I can like oust him from the top of the Google search results, that's like Ooh, that's I'm ambitious. Life, that, then I'll know <laughs> I've arrived. Yeah. That's the best. Um, you know what? I can't thank well, I'm speaking for Bryce this time. This time you are. <laughs> yes. Uh I can't thank you all for um, so much for joining us on this uh cast because you guys are so much fun. Your movie is so much fun. I promise we'll be pushing it as much as possible on social media because we truly both enjoyed it. Actually, all three of us did. Our third party, Murray, can't usually make these type of events because he works, seems, he's working on film sets. Seems like 24 hours a day now. We see him for five minutes. So, yeah, but we, you know, thank you. Is there anything you want to put out there that you haven't said yet, either about anything, new projects, anything, or maybe you want to talk about your social media? No. <laughs> no, no. Not great about social media. <laughs> no, I kind of got off social media during the pandemic and it's helped me focus on my creative stuff quite a bit more. But if I was just going to add anything, it would just be thank you so much. Genuinely means so, so, so much to us that you enjoyed the film and that you asked us on in the first place. And I feel like having these conversations really makes me feel like I, I found my people in many ways and you guys are our people and thank you. <laughs> no, we are definitely your people. I can tell you that. <laughs> we, I can't wait to see, and I have to go back and watch all your old content on, on uh, YouTube. Cause I, I've watched all of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like a list for you. <laughs> nice. Send me a list. Awesome. <laughs> well, I guess that brings us to the end. Bryce, do you have any, do you want to add anything? No, thanks a lot, guys. It was a true pleasure having you on. Thank so you. nice Likewise. to meet you both. So much. Nice to meet you guys. All right. Well, thanks, Ragers, for listening. And thanks for our guests. We can't thank you enough. You can't find them on social media. You can only find them in the movie Recovery. So make sure you go out there and check it out. Check out everything Film Rage at filmrageyyc.com, including our merch site for Redbubble and TeePublic. See what we look like on our YouTube channel by searching Film Rage Podcast. We are always wanting to make this a raging blast for our listeners, so please comment, like, and subscribe. Send an email to us for whatever reason, maybe about your best content you want us to see, at filmragecalgary at gmail.com. Dare us to see terrible movies to fuel our rage, but no matter what you do, no matter what you do, please Please make us rage. That's it for this episode. Rage on, everyone. Rage on. Rage on. Oh. Woo. Woo.